Hi and welcome to OTR Miniatures. Today I'm going to be painting these great eagles from The Hobbit. These are the first models from The Hobbit that I've got. My brother Thomas, who you've seen on the channel before, got them for me for Christmas. Let's open them up and get them assembled. As with most of the other stuff that I've painted so far on this channel, I based it with a bad and black and then did a heavy dry brush of Mechanica Standard Grey and then a lighter dry brush of Corax White. So we're left with this. This step was largely unneeded as we're going to be dry brushing the feathers in layers starting with the black ones anyway. But I just like to do it that way I can see all the detail. Now I'm going to go in starting with the black feathers, giving them a layer of a bad and black. That's how it looks after going over the feathers again with a bad and black. It wasn't a complete waste of time doing the dry brushing beforehand because it has actually managed to keep some of the colour values in there. If you look at it compared to when it was dry brushed. What I'm actually going to try with this one instead of painting it again with the abaddon black is I'm going to try a wash of Nuln oil just to see how that looks. This is how it looks once the Nuln oil is dry and to be honest that's actually pretty much the look of the black feathers that I want for the finished product anyway. So I think I might leave that one as it is and then just continue working on this one. So the next step for this one I'm going to be dry brushing on some kids, sorry, kids left flesh. And we are left with that. And now I'm not sure which one between the two that I actually prefer. I guess we'll wait until the brown feathers are done and then see which one looks best with them. So to do the brown feathers, I'm going to start by giving it a base of Rhinox hide. And we'll come back when that's done. Now that I've finished the base of Rhinox hide and it has dried, it looks like that. And I've got to say, now that I've added the brown, this one that I dry brush with the Kislev flesh, I think actually looks better because you've got the more common tone in it than this one does that's just grey. So next up is to give the brown feathers a dry brush or scrag brown. The dry brushing has really helped to pick out the details in the feathers and has definitely elevated the paint job on this. So next up, I'm going to be doing the head feathers and I'm going to start with a base layer of the scrag brown that we've just dry brushed onto the feathers here. So I'll get that done, show you what that looks like before moving on to the next step. This is how it looks after that. So next up, I'm going to be giving it a dry brush of Baylor brown or Bellor brown. Now the dry brushing is done, it's looking like that. So next thing for us to do is to paint the beak, which I'm going to start off by adding some Baylor brown to it, and then I'll probably mix in some yellow to that for the highlights. After the base of Baylor brown on the beak, the Great Eagle is now looking like this. So now what I'm going to do is try and set up my camera so you can see while I'm painting, and I'm going to mix some Rhinox hide into that to darken down the tip of the beak. You'll have to excuse the state of my wet palette palette at the moment. As you can see, I've got a few projects on the go, which is quite normal. So what I'm going to do is mix some of the Bellor Brown with the Rhinox hide, just to get a nice dark shade. And then we're just going to work that in towards the tip of the beak. As soon as we're in focus. So just a nice thin layer, probably do about half of the beak. Just get the underneath as well. And 
And while that's wet, we'll blend some of the Bad Old Brown back in. Just so that we haven't got a straight line there. Just get a nice, nice wet blend between the two. Oh, that's nice and blended in so now what we do is go back to the 50 50 mix put some more just on the tip and then come about halfway up that original layer of it and then we get some pure rhinoxide. Get that back in focus again. And then we blend that in just that very tip part there. And try and get that even all the way, a little bit underneath get the mix again and then quickly wet blend in the very middle bit just where the two colours are crossing over And then that gives us a much more natural graduation of colour from the back of the beak to the tip. So now we'll leave that to dry and then we'll come back for the next step. I'll just do that on the other eagle while I'm waiting for this one to dry. Once that's dry, the next step will be just to redefine the nostril with some thinned down rhinoxide. And now they're defined again by putting the rhinoxide in there for the shadows. We can now move on to the next and possibly last step which is to do the legs and for that I'm going to start with a base of rat skin flesh. And now that that's done we're on to our final painting stage for the great eagles because I've decided that I'm going to leave the talons as they are. So the final stage is going to be to add some highlights to the legs and feet with Luganath orange. With that the painting of these eagles is complete. Now all that's left to do is the basing and for that I'm not going to use the original base which is this. I'm just going to take the stand part from it and use some standard 60mm bases that I'll drill a hole in the middle for for that. And then I'll start adding the basing materials onto it. Now the bases are dried and done like this. All that's left to do is to add the scenery to it. So I'm going to use some PVA glue. And then a mix of Army Painter Battlefit, Battlegrass Green and the Brown Battleground. It'd be similar to the base that I did for the Warrior of Rohan if you've seen that video. And here are the finished bases. They're all dry now. I put the... PVA glue on a bit too thickly and it took a long time to dry so I had to leave them overnight. I also, which I didn't say before, added some bits of broken cork just in the centre there to act as rocks. I think it just adds a bit more depth to the base. 
as I say, where I put loads of the PVA on, it absorbed it all completely. So this is rock solid now. But what it's done is given the grass a almost wet look, which to be honest, I don't mind. But if that's not what you're looking for, then make sure you only put a thin layer of PVA glue on beforehand. Right. Now all that's left to do is put the eagles on place and then we're done. And here are the finished eagles. I glued them onto the bases using super glue so as not to damage any of the painting that we had done. Let me know what you think or if you'd like to see me paint anything else feel free to leave that in the comments down below. I'll leave you with some nice finishing shots of the eagles. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.